the title pretty much says it all. We're going into this new era of mainstream film where video game adaptations are going to become pretty popular. Or at least, that's how it seems. The thing is, I have some problems, concerns, grievances, whatever you want to call them, with the adaptations that are out right now. For this video, I'm focusing specifically on film adaptations, and more specifically, four franchises. Mario, Sonic, Pokemon, and Five Nights at Freddy's. I have absolutely no experience with any shows or IPs like The Last of Us or Twisted Metal or anything like that, so I'm sticking to the stuff I know, and what I know has been on the big screen lately. So my first claim is, IP recognition is favored over the film's actual quality. For this section, I'm going to go franchise by franchise first, and then I'm going to kind of sum it up. So let's start with Mario. The recent Mario movie was filled to the brim with references, but it had very little substance as a film. This is a phenomenon I like to call reference mania. There are so many references, in fact, that I felt very little semblance of progression. You know how in Mario games you usually start in the grassy area and you have to fight simple enemies with you slowly working your way up to the tougher levels and eventually Bowser's castle as you progress? Well, here, they throw so many different environments and characters in your face at once that there was never really that feeling of Mario slowly improving or going through a journey throughout the course of the film. Everything goes by so fast with little time to breathe, as if they were trying to squeeze so many different references in without thinking about how this would affect the world of the film. Seeing Toast Arena or the Yoshi Stampede from Melee for a few seconds felt less like a genuine easter egg and more like filling a quota like they were trying to emulate the wonder of exploring new areas in Mario games without putting in any of the work to make them interesting. Now the film itself has a very simple plot. It's essentially just the hero's journey and that's not necessarily a bad thing, as I don't expect some sort of cinematic subversion of tropes in a Mario movie. A basic plot can allow a film to fill in the details with whatever creative, well-written, and fun kinds of scenes work well together to tell a proper story. The big problem here is that no scene feels creative, well-written, or even fun. I can remember the core beats of what happened throughout the film, but individual pieces of dialogue or character development are just a blur to me because none of these things were memorable in the slightest. It really was just an above-average Illumination movie, which is to say an average animated movie. If you take all of the Mario references out for a second, what does the film leave you with? Something like the Lego movie actually had funny dialogue, important plot points, and a story with some sort of purpose to complement its references. It was a story about getting in touch with your inner child and learning that there isn't just one way to create, or even live life. One of the only things I found to be even remotely close to an interesting story in the Mario movie was Mario's conflict with his family. Something completely new to the Mario universe. But it ends up being completely dropped until the end of the movie, and even then, it's just resolved with Mario saving the city and everyone suddenly loving him now. It's this really odd thing to me, as previous game-to-film adaptations would have you believe that changing any part of the source material is sacrilege. But in this case, this addition felt like the only semblance of creativity and proper storytelling this movie had. I know mainline Mario games have never had a complex plot, which is exactly why a Mario movie seems like a terrible idea. But A, a game can rely on its gameplay alone while a film inherently needs a plot, and B, the Mario RPGs exist, which actually try to construct an interesting story within the Mario universe. I know that the 90s film may have discouraged Nintendo from wanting to change too much about Mario, but this film feels so empty because it lacks creativity and tries to hide this fact with references. As for the celebrity casting, Jack Black as Bowser is alright, but the popularity of his song felt highly manufactured. It's not a good song. Charlie Day as Luigi was decent. Everyone else was just fine or boring. They didn't really have a good script to flesh out their characters anyway. This isn't really the actor's fault so much as it is the fault of the people behind the film. But even so, celebrity casting, like Reference Mania, feels like a crutch for your movie instead of an extension of it. Honestly, I think this movie would have been just as popular without those celebrities. All the films I'm going to talk about appeal to a child audience, as well as an older, hyper-fan audience. Even FNAF, which is more of a recent property. This is not inherently a bad thing, but it seems to be being used as an excuse to tide audiences over with familiar properties, instead of taking the effort to craft a solid, standalone film. Mario games are consistently well-made and are approachable to everybody, while this movie felt like a half-baked project targeted at very specific audiences. I can't say I hated it, as it wasn't the worst possible film imaginable, especially as somebody who gets the references, but it didn't leave me feeling invested in the Mario series, 
They didn't leave me with anything at all. It's just okay, and most of the time, I'd rather watch something outright bad or good than just mediocre. Now on to FNAF. The FNAF movie was really weird because it felt like it was supposed to exclusively target people familiar with the lore, but it doesn't really do a good job of sticking to that lore. Various concepts have been changed, with a major one being that Mike Schmidt was supposed to be one of Michael Afton's aliases in the games, I think. And none of these changes make for a well put together or even mildly entertaining film. Furthermore, this film feels the need to over explain ideas it would have been better off showing, while understating the gravity of the events that took place at the Freddy's locations. I think it was a really weird choice to focus on this new story about Mike Schmidt, as it has little to do with Freddy's and feels more like a side quest in a larger game. The filmmakers had the opportunity to introduce viewers to the lore by actually showing some of the events that had been referenced throughout the series. But instead, the film just decides to explain everything away through passing dialogue. At that point, I'd be better off just looking up FNAF lore and retrospective videos on YouTube. I knew this was something we weren't going to get, but I was hoping for something a little more depressing than the exposition dump we got. Wouldn't it be so much more interesting to humanize the characters and events we only get to see through 8-bit minigames throughout the series? Wouldn't it be way more heartbreaking and emotionally investing to actually see children get separated from their families and killed within the restaurant? Wouldn't it feel so visceral to watch his parents blame themselves over the disappearance of their children? Imagine even seeing the FNAF 4 minigames as actual scenes within a film. It would be horrifying in a way that's more depressing than outright scary. Maybe I shouldn't be comparing what we got to what I wanted, and maybe this is all a bit harsh for what is essentially supposed to be a kid's movie. But A, I don't think this should have been a kid's franchise in the first place, and B, I think you would have been better off actually showing some of the events from the games to get people old and new interested. Older fans could get a different perspective on something they already know, while people new to the series could get introduced to all these different events. Apart from all of that though, the movie is just really boring. Again, exposition is just dumped on you by Vanessa instead of being shown to you or incorporated into the film somehow. The main plot about Mike, his traumatic past, and his sister isn't very compelling. The whole dream theory thing is dumb and repetitive, that's nowhere in the games I don't think. While the film does try to make you sympathize for the dead children, it does so in the most bare bones way possible, through exposition. In any scene where the children do appear, they don't seem scared or traumatized at all. In fact, they appear to be the main villains up until Vanessa explains what's going on. You could say that this parallels how the games make you believe the animatronics are evil until you delve into the lore, but the way it's done results in a very unsatisfactory reveal. If you know what's gonna happen, you know who the main villain is, but if you don't, I mean, it feels like a very poorly told story. I know most of the people interested in this movie knew in advance who Matthew Lillard was gonna be, but if they really wanted a twist villain, they really needed to give him more of a screen presence. And better dialogue. The context in which he says, I always come back, doesn't make any sense. There's no reason for him to say that. And the way he says it isn't very well delivered either. For a horror film, this isn't really a scary movie. There's some brutality in it, sure, but nothing really makes you tense or brings you some sense of dread. Again, a more depressing type of horror could have benefited this movie if the lore had been more clearly incorporated into the film. But it felt like the filmmakers just did not want to touch any of that and we're content with believing that people will know about it in advance. For a movie that's for the fans, it doesn't really reward you for being a fan. There is some reference mania in the film, a lot of which is chalked up to some of the drawings, YouTuber casting. I believe the Freddy that comes to get Abby at her house is supposed to be Golden Freddy, but that's not really explained. I feel like the biggest source of reference mania here is just seeing the animatronics as real, accurately designed robots on screen, which isn't a bad thing. In fact, I'm really glad that this is something the film got right, aside from the red eye thing. They could have just done the black eyes, white people thing from the games. References themselves aren't a bad thing, but they aren't enough to create a compelling film on their own. You can't rely on them. Really the most surprising thing was that they didn't just adapt the story of the books into a movie. You know, the silver eyes, all those other ones. I feel like that not only would have been easier to do, but would have resulted in a better told story. The first book wasn't that bad actually, I read it. Alright, next up, Detective Pikachu. Detective Pikachu is once again another okay film. It would not have survived without being based on a pre-existing property. I honestly have very little to say about Detective Pikachu. I remember the lead up to it being very controversial because of the realistic designs of the Pokemon, but other than that, the film doesn't really stand out to me. 
The best thing I could say about it is that it kickstarted this resurgence of video game film adaptations, and proved that they could be appealing, at least for more family-friendly or kid-oriented franchises. This film is based on the game of the same name, so I guess part of its positive and negative traits could be chalked up to it just trying to adapt a very specific story from a specific game, rather than the franchise as a whole, like these other movies. I guess I'm more willing to give Pokemon a pass, since the recent games don't really have a quality worth respecting, but this movie is fine. It still suffers from reference mania, but at least here it feels like time was taken to flesh out a world where Pokemon exist. But even so, it's still not something I'd feel all too enthusiastic about rewatching. Like I said, it's just an okay film. And finally, the Sonic movies. This is my forte. The Sonic movies walk the line between generic family films and Sonicified action flicks. This is an interesting thing because A, it appeals to the broadest audience possible, and B, it parallels the 2000 Sonic games that wanted to stretch out their playtime with different mechanics. Part of the fan service from these films comes from their marketing, getting Jeff Fowler, who worked on the CG scenes for some of the Sonic games I believe, redesigning Sonic after the backlash, getting Tyson Hess on board, musical references in the teasers. All of these things made it feel like the people working on this project were passionate about the franchise. This is the kind of stuff I don't mind so much and even like as long as it leads to a solid final product. However, the films are fine, they're serviceable. The first one holds up as a movie aimed at families and the second tries to tie in more Sonic lore. I did find the first film's dialogue to be surprisingly solid and even funny at times, though Sonic is clearly the worst written character. The second movie has lower lows, it's generally less funny, the dance-off sequence, the wedding scene but higher highs for those familiar with the franchise. They are decent in their own right, though keep in mind I do have a bias towards Sonic, but at the end of the day, they still don't feel like anything special. They are modern day children's movies that are basic in their approach to the franchise and don't stand out amongst the likes of their competition. If you're a Sonic fan, oh no, why? You may be willing to overlook some of the poorer pieces of dialogue, weak plot points, anything involving humans, or the fact that these films are poorly representative of their franchise as a whole, but anyone else probably won't have strong opinions on them one way or the other. Now, compare this movie to Night of the Werehog, for instance. Night of the Werehog is a lovingly crafted animated short made to advertise Sonic Unleashed way back when. It doesn't rely on references at all, as it didn't need to, and takes place in a locale new to Sonic at the time. Yet it still manages to get Sonic's character right and consistent. It doesn't rely on poorly written dialogue to tell a story, instead using its visuals to give you a sense of what's going on and make you care about it. The plot is basic, sure, but it's how that plot is approached that makes the short such a charming spectacle. It's fun, investing, and very much Sonic. I know it's not exactly fair to compare two feature-length films to a short, but Night of the Werehog is such a good example of what I would want out of a Sonic movie that I can't help but wonder what could have been. Imagine a fully animated adaptation of Sonic Unleashed, where Sonic just goes around the world interacting with different cultures to save the planet. A film or trilogy where references are kept to a minimum, and the focus is on just being a fun, action-packed adventure with proper characterization and decent writing. I don't expect cinematic masterpieces out of any of the films here, though I certainly wouldn't mind them. What I do expect are solid films that are able to stand on their own as entertaining pieces of media. Just as Super Mario Galaxy, Sonic Mania, and Pokemon Black and White stand out as solid individual experiences within their own respective franchises. So why can't what made them so great be translated to the big screen? I want something truly good, not just disguised as good. It's interesting to note that Sonic fans are more likely to prefer Sonic 2, as it's more loyal to the source material, while others seem to instead prefer the first movie, as it's better paced, more straightforward, and funnier. It's this divide where you would normally have to decide between appealing to the fans or the masses, but I think there's a flaw in that line of thinking. I think both of these appeals can be mishandled and result in a poorly constructed film, which leads me to the last part of this claim. All right. Final thoughts. I, like many others, used to believe in making adaptations that exclusively target the fans, but I now see how that idea can be misconstrued. Some fans are satisfied with reference mania, and care little for the actual substance of the film. Maybe all they really want to see is their favorite franchise finally appear on the big screen. Personally, I believe, for the fans, should refer to general quality and respect for the source material instead of just reference media. To respect the source material isn't just to reference it, it's to understand what made it so enjoyable when it first released, when there was nothing to reference yet. The Sonic series is a great example of how just trying to appeal to the fans doesn't always work in your favor, as it could lead to something like Sonic Forces, 
tons of references to past characters and locales, but little substance in the way of gameplay, story, or visuals. I really don't think my complaints are about sucking up to critics, as much as they are about delivering a quality product that is not only a love letter to the series, but also something that can stand on its own two feet. Sure, fans can be passionate about a franchise, but why not allow them to show newcomers why that passion exists in the first place, especially through a medium that is more widely accessible? Now, you're allowed to like these movies, but ask yourself, why do I like them? Does it have to do with the quality of the plot, writing, use of the medium, etc? Or are you a victim of reference mania? If so, call the number on screen. Some people are openly so, and if that's you, more power to you. Some don't even realize their biases kick in when watching these films. In any case, I don't want a film to just be waving references around hoping to distract me with them. I want good plots, well-written dialogue, believable characters, heart, and the feeling that this movie has a reason to exist besides just being an advertisement for the IP. I want the same passion that was there when developers were making IPs like Mario and Sonic for the first time around. I feel that each and every single one of these films fails on these fronts, and it saddens me to believe that this will just be the trend from now on. Moving on to Claim 2. Using pre-existing properties discourages new ideas. This is more of a me thing, but with some exceptions, I feel like I want something different out of movie and game experiences. I don't want to finish playing the newest Zelda game and then go to see the newest Zelda movie. I don't want to feel burnt out on a game franchise or just the concept of action-oriented stuff in general, as that's what game adaptations tend to be. There's exaggeration at play here, of course, as not everyone is going to be making game adaptations all at the same time. There are tons of movies being made and that will be made that have nothing to do with games. Plus, as someone who doesn't keep up with the trends of the latest movies, it's probably something I could just ignore. It would just be harder to do so, especially when it's an adaptation of something I care about. Really, I think my main issue here is the idea that I hold certain franchises in high esteem, like Sonic, and don't want to see them be tainted, like Sonic. Most of the adaptations that have come out tend to use plots unique from their respective games, or game series. But they all still have to hinge on the same basic concept. No matter what, a Sonic adaptation still has to be a Sonic movie. A Mario adaptation still has to be a Mario movie. I'm not saying we should go back to the Uwe Boll era of adaptations having nothing to do with their source material, but I still want some sort of creativity in the mix. Ideally, I would much rather like to see a film of a brand new IP inspired by the worlds and stories of video games instead of one of an existing IP. Though more financially risky, which is I guess really the important part, this offers greater creative freedom while leaving games to their own devices, like the Switch. We might see films like this in the future, hopefully not like Ready Player One, that's not what I mean, but the vast majority of these types of movies are probably going to be adaptations. So at least fill those adaptations with well thought out new ideas that still make sense in the context of their franchise, but allow for interesting explorations of concepts the games may not touch on, like Mario's relationship with his family. Just please, no more humans where they don't belong. Claim 3, the final claim, final grievance, and that is the possibility of another cinematic universe, which can disrupt the quality of films as individual stories. I really don't want another cinematic universe. I don't want to have to keep up with these everlasting sets of stories. I never even really got into the MCU, and that's not even like a I'm too cool for school sort of thing. They just introduced Spider-Man too late. Spider-Man was the only character I care about. Films should be able to stand on their own instead of relying on this loose connectivity that really means nothing in the end. Think about how long-running video game franchises operate. Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, and Shin Megami Tensei are series in which each consecutive game has nothing to do with the last allowing each to be a standalone experience, with some exceptions, you know, like spin-offs. Mario games don't really have long-running stories to tie into newer titles, while Sonic games are... Well, Sonic's not really a great example, but you get my point, right? A Smash Bros. movie idea was apparently recently pitched. Hopefully nothing comes out of it. Not only would it not work with how disconnected all of these movies are from one another, but do you really want these adaptations to reach the current state of the MCU levels of bad? Again, let films stand on their own and take your time to make them good instead of just hype. I'm not saying a Smash movie could never be good, but just think, who would you really trust to handle it? Nolan? Thankfully, like I said, each of these adaptations is very disconnected from one another and are even being tackled by completely different movie studios. Even Nintendo is getting different companies to handle each one of their IPs. Even so, individual franchises can have their own cinematic universes. The Sonic movie, for example, is getting a knuckle show, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do something with Shadow following the third film. 
post credit scenes are still prevalent thanks to the MCU, but I'm hoping they won't continue to be used to hype up the next project within the universe. The Mario movie teased Yoshi, even though a Yoshi stampede was already in the movie. And the FNAF movie teased a sequel with My Grandfather's Clock from FNAF 2. Detective Pikachu Returns is also a thing now, so a second Detective Pikachu isn't necessarily off the table. Alternatively, they could just do an entirely different Pokemon thing altogether. Is it bad to make sequels to these films? Not necessarily, as games tend to have a lot more lore, story, characterization, and more to tackle than a movie could do in the span of two hours or so. Really, these sequels should have an easier time expanding on the world of their IP because everything is kind of laid out for them already. Do you honestly think that a character like Knuckles, or especially Shadow, would be the focus of the Sonic movies if Sonic were a brand new IP? No, they exist because it's all been laid out already. That being said, if these first movies are just okay, or have flaws that are so inherent to their core identity that they will have to be translated over to the later films no matter what, i.e. the humans in the Sonic movie universe, then that doesn't seem like good news for those film sequels either. My point here is that I don't want these franchises milked to their last drop for content especially when their first film outings, kinda, aren't all that good in the first place. Alright, and here's some miscellaneous stuff. Films will be used for brand synergy with the games and vice versa. You know, something like Sonic X Shadow Generations and the Sonic 3 movie coming out at around the same time. This doesn't really matter to me as long as both properties are good, but, you know, they might not be good. And yes, I know that the big argument against me here is these are franchises primarily targeting kids, even FNAF. So what did you really expect the film industry to do? And yeah, that's absolutely true. There's really nothing I could say to that. But man, kids deserve better. They deserve better than to just be given the film equivalent of junk food. Sure, you could stick a phone filled with a bunch of low effort content farm videos in front of a kid and they'll watch it all day. But do you really think that's what's best for them? Similarly, though maybe not to the same extent, you could just stick a kid in front of a bunch of bad movies or even okay movies. But don't you think it's better to show them works with actual quality behind them? Entertainment is an industry, yes, but it's also how we communicate thoughts, emotions, and experiences in a way that can be much more profound or heartfelt than everyday communication. A kid will watch anything, but a truly good story will leave them with something to think about for the rest of their life. Again, I'm not saying I want a Scorsese film, I just want quality. So to sum it up, I'm still not super into the quality of these adaptations, what their popularity could mean for creativity in the industry, and the possibility of MCU-like problems plaguing these franchises as well. I'm sure these adaptations have their defenders, and like I said, you're allowed to like these movies, but they are just not what I want out of a video game to film adaptation. Maybe I'm just being picky and unrealistic, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being picky about something you love and want to see succeed in the best way possible. I could be wrong to worry, and maybe these films are just a bad start to an otherwise great era of storytelling, and I hope that's true, but I'm just not seeing it right now.